Let's go. What's up, guys? Um. Oh man. <clears throat> Been a hot minute. Uh, good to be back. Hang on one second. I keep uh forgetting to set my monitor to like never sleep mode, so it's been turning off in the background of all the videos I've been recording, so I should have that fixed now. Uh, but yeah, I just got back from the film festival. It was an incredible time. It was great to see all of my friends and basically family at this point with all the projects that we've worked on together. So uh, super great to uh, see everybody again. Uh, a bunch of the crew from Ember was there, so great to see all those guys again. Ember got a runner-up award for Best Young Filmmaker, so very exciting, praise God for that. There were two showings of it at the festival. There must have been several hundred people in the room both times. The room was packed for, for both showings, so um, I was extremely nervous and questioning every decision I had made at any point during the production while watching it, uh, feeling like the film was absolute garbage for, you know, just because suddenly there's a room full of people watching it. Um, but lots of people liked it. I was able to get some great feedback on it. So I'm uh, ready to start exploring what the next one will be. I have ideas uh, that, you know, I'm not gonna talk about yet, but um, yeah, I'm excited. So I'm excited to see where, where the Lord leads next. I did want to talk for a moment though about, I guess some things I learned while I was making Ember and uh, just maybe some tips for directing and making a project. Uh, it can be daunting and um, hard to know, you know, where to start. And so I thought this would be a good uh, topic for today's video since uh, what, two weeks ago now I posted uh, the short film, so if you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. But anyway, let's jump into uh, directing tips and just thoughts on making a film, making stuff. Just, you know, how to how to do it. So the first thing is communication. You're working with a crew, and for Ember, I actually had a bigger crew than I thought I would. It was like 30, 30 something people. But you have to make sure you're communicating clearly with everybody. I don't feel I did a great job of communicating anything really, but I did get what I wanted for the most part, so maybe I did okay. But really when it comes down to directing and communication, the thing you have to remember is the director's purpose. See, filmmaking is a combination of pretty much every art form out there, or many art forms. I'm sure people would start naming arts that film does not utilize. I guess you can comment them below. I would actually be interested to hear hear what those might be. But if you took the director out, you'd lack an overall vision for the project, for the film. So you might have incredible cinematography, an outstanding color grade, beautiful music, beautiful art department, stunning acting, but if they're not all on the same page, it could be very, very confusing. Because while they could all be amazing, they might not all be serving the same story. See, that's where the director has to come in and make sure that what everyone's ideas are, are all going to serve the story and make sure that they're going to tell the story better and work in unison with the other art forms and other departments that are being utilized. So really when it comes down to the communication, it's, it's that, it's making sure that everyone's on the same page and working to tell the same story in the best way possible. Directing is hard, it's a lot of fun, it's definitely not for everybody. I definitely enjoy it. It's hard work just like every other job on a film set. I can't say that there's any job ever that isn't hard, but if you enjoy it, then, you know, you should keep doing it. Just know that if you're planning to direct, you need to make sure that you have other people to help you do other things. I tried to make sure that other people were handling every other aspect of everything that needed to be handled so that I could think solely on directing and, you know, the scene that we're working on and stuff like that. And even down to having a DP, because I love cinematography, it's a passion of mine, but if I was trying to direct and DP, and I've done this before where I've directed and DP'd, at least for me, because I am a cinematographer, I will stop directing and I will just DP. 
So, if you go watch Relic, my Star Wars fan film, it could have been better because I could have been directing more, but because I was DPing, I was focused more on the cinematography, so I feel like a lot of the cinematography I shot was beautiful, but the directing and I wasn't paying attention to, you know, acting and things like that and really coaching uh, or really even casting a vision for what I wanted that well because I was just too focused on cinematography. So when it came time to shoot Ember, I decided to bring my friend Matthew on, who I've been wanting to work with for so long. So I brought him on as DP and he just did an incredible job. Matthew, if you're watching this, again, thank you, dude. But by having Matthew there uh, to focus on the cinematography, it allowed me to tell him what I wanted and then he was able to do it and even bring his own, you know, his own experience to the table. And it just makes it, it makes the final product so much better because it's not just you doing everything. Obviously, there's a place for one man crew, but you can look at one man crew things and that's a skill and a lot of people do it really well. But you look at feature films with large crews and you can you can tell the difference. You can tell the quality it goes it goes to another level. To another level. Because you have everyone everyone working to do their part and ever, like experts in each areas it's a beautiful thing to see a film crew all working together plan more than or bleh, plan more time than you think you need uh plan more time than you think you need can i not talk right now this is you're always gonna need more time. At some point, you're just gonna have to call it and say it's good enough. What? At some point, you're just gonna have to call it good enough. Perfection is impossible to reach. If you ever do hit perfection, it's an accident, okay? And then those moments can never be recreated. So you can't, you can aim for perfection, but you always fall short. When you get perfection, it's it's an accident. You'll, if, if you, when you make stuff, if anyone out there makes anything, you know what I'm talking about. If you have something that's just absolute perfection, you know it was just like, it just happened and you couldn't control it. At least it feels that way sometimes, I don't know. Also pre-planning, pre-production is huge. Bring people on who uh, know what needs to happen during that phase, otherwise you're just gonna waste all your time there and then you get to production and nothing will happen because you didn't do anything in pre-production even though you had pre-production or you won't do pre-production because you think, eh, we don't need pre-production. And then you also won't be able to get anything done during production because pre-planning is key. That's the gist. Also, know what you want. I spent hours uh, before the before we even, before even pre-production, just writing down, like I would print out the scripts and I would just mark it up. I would write things down, write down uh, what I was thinking, what I was picturing, what I wanted, things like that. That way, when we got to uh, production, I would have all of that processed, I would know what I want, and we wouldn't have to waste any time trying to figure anything like that out. You have to know what you want. At the same time, you have to be willing to compromise and, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, be willing to go for less than perfect, especially on low-budget stuff where you just don't have endless amounts of time. You kind of have to choose your battles, and I'll give an example. There were times on set when, you know, there were things we could have tweaked or whatever, uh, but we just didn't have the time, so I... It, it works with my directing style because I like to keep a fresh, new feel to things, and I don't want to, you know, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse constantly. I like to uh, let it almost have a running gun feel to it, uh, and, you know, keep that, keep that newness going, if you will. So I'm willing to not always have the perfect, uh, perfect little details of every little thing in the shot. It's just, it's just, it's just my style. Then there are times where there's things that you kind of need changed, but you also have to pay attention to, you know, what, what's your time situation looking like while you're shooting? Do you have the time to fight the battle? There was a situation where, <clears throat> Uh, we were shooting a scene, we had plenty of time, we shot the scene, I think it was like six takes from each angle or something like that. What was happening while we were setting up the shot was I was looking at it and there was supposed to be a TV flicker um, in the shot and we were having a 
we couldn't figure out how to get the TV flicker. It was, you know, going to be too bright or you weren't going to see it. So there were some people on set who were kind of just pushing like, eh, it'll be fine without it. You can just hear the TV. And I'm like, mm, I didn't want it. I don't want to do that. I just felt like if, if we didn't have the, the TV flicker, it wouldn't sell it. We had time there. So I said, no, we need the TV flicker. And we worked and we got it. And it was... It looks great, but yeah, you just got to know you got to be willing to change your plans and know beforehand what you will absolutely not change on and like you're not going to budge on those things and then know what you're willing to budge on. Uh, I would err on the side of being willing to budge on a lot more than what you're not willing to budge on. Uh, otherwise, you're going to end up having to budge on the things anyway, <laughs> and that's not a position you want to be in unless you have millions of dollars to make these movies, but most of you probably don't. Anyway, I just thought we could, you know, talk about this kind of stuff because it's, it's hard to make a film. Making films are hard. Making anything is hard. <laughs> Life is hard. <laughs> Very exciting update. The Ember soundtrack by Aaron Fallen. Incredible. It, the music just was, it was amazeballs. The, the music Aaron Fallen did was amazeballs. I have, I have another video coming soon that'll explain that if you, if you didn't get it. The soundtrack, sorry, I got, off to, I, got up, I got off track. The soundtrack is coming uh, April 3rd to, I believe, all, all major streaming platforms. So link in the description to pre-save it on Spotify. Also, another cool thing, I have added my Ember minifigure to, to my minifigure stand over here. Which that minifigure stand, it's a collection of minifigures from a bunch of the film projects I've worked on. Not all of them, but the bigger ones. Another cool thing is I finally got a hat with my logo on it because, you know, who wouldn't want to, who wouldn't want a hat with their logo on it? I also got, one second, a shirt with my logo on it. This isn't just a logo shirt though. This is actually, this is actually a shirt for Ember. If you're a crew member watching this who doesn't have their shirt yet, it's, uh, it's in a box right over here. Um, I'll get it to you somehow. Don't worry. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm branded now, guys. This is, we're, we're going places, okay? iPhone filmmaker stuff will be coming back shortly. I have lots of, lots of videos for that. It's just, it's just the quality of them that I'm trying to figure out how, how good, to, <laughs> how much time to spend on them. Um, cause I want them to be good, but I also just want to get them out there. So I'm, I'm making those. I don't know how often I'll be posting them, hopefully a few times a month, but yeah iPhone filmmaker stuff is returning after this this video next next Saturday or the Saturday after that will be another iPhone filmmaker video. Yeah, I think that's everything for this video. I think that about wraps us up. I think it's about time to uh, get get started for the uh, next film project though. <laughs> time to go finish watching The Hobbit. Can you believe I haven't watched all three of the Hobbit movies yet? I've seen Lord of the Rings. I've seen Lord of the Rings extended editions. Uh, now I've only seen the first two Hobbits. We're gonna go watch the go watch the last one right now. What's all the hate on the Hobbit movies? Sure, some over the top, unrealistic stunts, but it was cool. 